welcome back to A New View, and we hope that you've enjoyed um, our show. We thank you so much for getting involved with us and, and joining the communication that we have online and just really encouraging us because, you know, with our last episode, we started to talk about social media, kind of what is social media, what are some statistics, and our hashtag for these series is the good the bad and how we can be better. So it's good, bad, be better, especially on social media and to speak life. So this episode is all probably kind of going to be about maybe the negative sides of social media and what we can look for that maybe can help us. So I uh, made the little comment this morning, actually, as we were on the way to the studio talking about this and talking about sometimes it can become flesh book. Mm -hmm. It really yeah. can. And that, you know, we can go after <laughs> a long like <laughs> day and we can just start to scroll. And really, God really has told me, because I mean, we're all human, we can get into that mindset and we can see these different things, but really to be conscious that we need to view everything maybe from a heavenly perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I know in Colossians 3, I was reading, it was talking about, you know, looking at everything from a heavenly perspective. And of course, our verse two that we want to really drive home this week is the Philippians 4, 8, that whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Let's think on those things. Yes. Um, because sometimes, you know, when we get into to Facebook and our, and our flesh book, you know, there's a, a thing that I really tell people that it really saddens me because they there has been this confusion between if you disagree with someone that you instantly dislike them. Mm -hmm. Um, and and it's, a, it's a heated talk. You know, we can all disagree with each other. And then another one that I think that, that has been so distorted, you know, between the disagreement instantly doesn't mean to slide, um, is also that we can accept someone. We can accept someone because they're a person that we love them and that, you know, or we don't really know them, but we love them as we love the Lord, you know. Or we're trying to love them. We're trying yeah, to okay love too. them. Right. Yeah. That's okay, too. But, you know, really, you can accept someone, but that doesn't mean we approve of what they do or what they don't do or what they what they believe in, you know. So there's a difference between acceptance and approving. Mm -hmm. But um, just really, um, when we go through our Facebooks, there's something that was said last week. Someone said, you know, we can have concern, but don't go to condemnation. Right. And that's, that's, that's really, I mean, sometimes we can get such a critical eye and be very judgmental Especially on, social, on media. social media. And, yes. um, you know, we're, we're going through and, and we're seeing things. And usually, you know, when we see things that maybe kind of hit us the wrong way, maybe there are things that we're dealing with also. Yeah, but sure. But really looking at it from a heavenly perspective is, is thinking whatever's good, whatever's good on that and not negative. Mm -hmm. But like we talked about briefly in the last segment, I mean, there's a reason we can embrace that unfollow button. If our mm -hmm. feeds are getting too much negativity or if sure. we're on a healthy lifestyle trying to, to better ourselves and take care of our temple, maybe we need to unfollow the, the recipe <laughs> stuff right. for a while. The sugar shack. The, the, yeah, the, the sugar shack. Oh, oh my goodness, yeah, whatever those sugar, all the, the tasty desserts, there's a lot of them oh my goodness uh -huh. and uh, unfollow now that we're all unfollow hungry, yes. unfollow <laughs> but that's true we can do that because it 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 doesn't show them that they unfriend because there's mm -hmm. also the people that you know that do you we've all had those friends that have you know taken their toys out of the sandbox and stormed off and all of a sudden you realize they've unfriended you and you're like what you know I've even had family members unfollow <laughs> or unfriend said, me I'm like taking okay. the toys out of the sandbox but, I love that <laughs> yes but they do I mean yeah. they really do and usually <laughs> it's just because they haven't they become offended, and then they instantly they think that's a solution. And then all of a sudden, or we're we'll just get... not their cup of tea, right. and that is okay. okay. There's a lot right. of things on social media that you cannot take personally, right. guys. It's social media, it's, I've found so we have to remember nothing that. Nothing on social media that you should take personally. Right. Yeah, right. That's good. Um, and so this one's funny for me. Um, thinking about social media, uh, thinking about logging in um, as if you walk into a room. I, I'm coming in here because I need to start the dishwasher, but I walk past the laundry room and there's a big pile that needs to be done. I, you get distracted. So when you log into social media, I got on there so I could see my friends' children my, and my friends and yeah. check things out. Logged in the other day because I wanted to get a picture off my daughter's page of our grandkids to print and put in a frame. 
do you think that's the first thing I did? <laughs> Ten minutes later, I'm mindlessly scrolling. We just lose it. We 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 forget what we're there for. Right. Yeah. Right. It can be sure. it, it can be a time sucker. I mean, I really have to to I put my stuff in the mornings, but then sometimes I have to say don't go back on there today. You really have too much on your plate that you really can't. Mm -hmm. um, and you get the notifications, but if you're getting the notifications where it's dinging you or it's doing that, you have to turn that off. Yeah. That's yeah. temptation. Just answer later because <laughs> right. then you'll, 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 you can't answer everything like a 911 call. Yeah. We just can't. Sure. I think, too, uh, the same kind of disclaimer that we gave the last time. We are not social media experts. We right. are simply sharing our view. That's what our show is about. And looking at things from a biblical perspective or just from a perspective more on what the scripture talked about, too, whatever is lovely, noble, mm -hmm. all of that. We're not perfect on social media by any means, and we are not passing judgment, and we are not no. saying, hey, this way is the better way to do it. You shouldn't unfollow. None of that. Right. Like, we, there are plenty of people that unfollow us because we're not their cup of tea, and right. that's fine. You can't really, you can't take that kind of stuff personal. And right. you have to remember, social media is just a part of life. It is not your life. It is not a lot of, there used to be, um, I feel like a lot of people used to say, Social media is, Facebook is your highlight reel. You know, you're just putting on there the best part of what you want people to see. And you know what? Honestly, some of that has some truth. You know, right, we do right. do that. We take pictures that we want to put on there. We decide. I decide what pictures I want to go on Facebook. Right. I'm not just going to put every photo that's in my camera roll or just, you know, I decide what message I want to put out there. Right. In that deciding, we have to be conscious of deciding what comes in. And as we did, I did some research um, on how social media is affecting us mentally. And a lot of us know how, you know, how it makes you feel sometimes. And it, there are different terms that psychologists are throwing around now that you would have never heard before. Some of the stuff I read um, was about, you know, young people especially. And we're going to talk about better ways to help our young people and our own kids and peers um, deal with social media. We're going to do that in our third um, episode on how, what kind of tips and takeaways we can give you for that. But there are words like cyberbullying and Facebook depression. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes Facebook, um, social media in general can give you the more use you have, the more sadness you feel. You have less life satisfaction and feel perceived social isolation. Not everybody is going to feel that way right. about using social right. media. But if you do, it's a real thing. It's mm -hmm. a thing that people are are experiencing. I can tell you for myself, I talked a little bit of um, one experience with Instagram in our last episode, but on Facebook, um, it's been a few years, but I just had a ton of friends that were more like acquaintances. On Facebook, were more like acquaintances, people that, you know, our relationships had kind of had their season, but yet I kept seeing some of the stuff on Facebook over and over again, and it would make me uncomfortable. And I thought, Lord, am I jealous of this person? Am I insecure? Like, what is this tapping on? And it was a matter of, you're not really friends with that person anymore. You don't, it's not someone that you interact with. It's not, it's making you uncomfortable because it's not real. You're just mm -hmm. looking at stuff that doesn't really affect you in a good way. You know, yeah. it would make me a little bit like, oh, okay, well, that's, it just didn't make me feel mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And I just decided, you know what, I'm not really being true to who I am by continually looking at this person's stuff, and we don't really hang out. We're kind of in two different circles, walking two different ways in life, and that's okay. Right. It doesn't mean anything bad. It's just a matter of cleaning up a part. If social media is this much a part of our mm -hmm. lives, let's be conscious. It's what I like to say. Let's have some social media graciousness, yes. and that is what I'm going to talk and teach my daughter as she will embark on her own social media whatever mm -hmm. at some point. Um, but that that's just been, you know, I've, I also was reading that, um, you know, social media can become addictive. Are, mm -hmm. are we not all guilty of being mm -hmm. on social media too much? My husband will tell me that, you know, mm -hmm. hey, babe, you're on that a lot. Or, and although I don't like that little sting of, oh, I need it. Yeah. I need an awareness because right. women, we're using it more than men are. And mm -hmm. you mentioned your husband said something to you, you know, in the last episode. That was great advice. And yeah. if we as moms and wives and women mm -hmm. and friends right. can tell each other, hey, that, that you might want to check mm -hmm. that you might want to chickety check that yeah and, and not be offended concern. yeah not as concern yes you know, and not, the concern, condemnation. not condemnation because absolutely that's really what 
you know, like you said, you, you will see a lot of people that only put their highlight reels. But mm -hmm. there's a flip side to the bad social media also. Yeah. I mean, some of those highlight reels, they're operating maybe in their false self and they wish that they wouldn't, but they don't know how to get out of that. Yeah. But you also have the flip side where you have the people that really do have some some deep-rooted soul issues, some deep-rooted yeah. um issues connecting and they'll put every I like I call them they're kind of like attention grabbers they'll yeah. just unload with a, a, a barrage of post or they'll have one problem after another that they're seeking you know yeah. prayer for and um, I had I had one little girl that was across the country and um, she just kept every day and I said I don't want you to take this the wrong way but if you took all of these concerns to God as you took them to Facebook Things would change. Yeah. Things would change. And that's where we have to be mindful because I, I look back at some of our time hop. That's the beauty of, of social media. Yeah. It shows how you've either grown or how you haven't grown. <laughs> or how your how kids you have grown. Or your kids have oh. grown. Oh my gosh. That's, that's <laughs> really love like, oh my goodness. They seem so tiny. Yeah. But I love those because it really brings back the things. And I know that when I first started using social media, it was kind of like, oh, you tell them everything you did today. You know, you yeah, give them I think the, we all went through that phase. Run, run, <laughs> run down and things. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I mean, we're very authentic and open. And so there's not really a lot of things that I know that we hide, but I know. Yeah. But you see those things and you think, wow. And then you use it for different types of, of things. So just to be mindful, but if you're recognizing that you're getting on Facebook in the flesh and you're starting to have a judgmental or yes. critical eye. And I can't tell you how many people really too, um, just really saddens me. Cause I've had people say all your friends like your stuff and they don't like any of my stuff. And I'm like, what, who counts that? Yeah. Or they'll be like, um, Oh, I just, you know, I don't know how, you know, you get so, and I'm like, who counts that? If, if you're comparing or looking at somebody else's things, I think you're really missing the beauty of connection. Yeah, yeah for sure. And that's what a lot of us have gotten on these social media platforms for. In the beginning was to keep up with family right. and friends. We talked about right. that connection. And it is a sort of connection. It's yes. not the best connection by any means. It should not be your only connection yes, yes. socially. But for a lot of people, you, when you don't see your family frequently or keeping up with old friends that are still very important to right. you, yeah. um, it is a great tool for connecting. I know we, yeah. we definitely use it for that, us girls yeah. too. Yeah, for sure. And something I've really started using it because I used to not um, friend anyone if I didn't personally know them. But mm -hmm. then it being in ministry and going and speaking at different places or knowing different people, people would want to connect with me because they said, hey, I read your stuff or I've seen your stuff. And so then I started connecting with people that I maybe didn't know meet in person and at first that felt a little weird um, at first and I'm I'm you know I didn't sometimes always use the best discernment because then when they start multi-level marketing me or asking for money or different things like that of course then I'll graciously say sorry <laughs> that, and then I have me. to block, up, block them or I yeah. have to, to you know um, take them off there but I can't tell you the connections that I have made from people all over the world yeah. that I haven't actually met in person, but that are very much a part of Restored Ministries. I mean, in the Restored Ministries blog and just different people and prayer intercessors. I mean, I have some people that I've never met in person, but they are in groups and they're prayer groups and they really cover me or my family or the ministry yeah. in prayer. So there is a a great way to, I guess, to connect, mm -hmm. but just to be mindful that, of course, you wouldn't want to just connect. I mean, especially if you're a married woman, you don't. I had one. This yeah. is funny. I think don't I, be connecting with men on the Facebook, right. this girls. Is kind of funny Come because, on. <laughs> yes, because there was um, a gentleman that was in ministry wanted to connect with me. I saw that we had hundreds of uh, of connecting mutual friends, friends, mutual yeah. friends, and so so I did. And then he kept private messaging me, "Hi, hi, hi. You look great. You look great." And I said, "Hey, hi," <laughs> but I don't ha make it a habit of communicating with men. I'm happily married, so I'm sorry. And and then it changed and he said okay I'm really poor can you send me some money and I'm like sorry I don't send money to, to people that maybe I don't know so then I was he's like, probably like well what do you do ma'am he's, he's gonna have to go to the block button now but I mean just but using discernment yes you know? absolutely oh, Kim what you got and for so, us um, in in all of us having gone to Facebook or whatever social media we use um, for our own purpose um, yes some people really, really see that as an extension of themselves. And the, mm. the best likening I have for this is your tattoo. It's a tattoo sleeve. And maybe mm. you're going to put a picture or a phrase or something on there. And maybe your friends see it. If they love it, are they going to come tattoo a little heart on your arm? 
or if they dislike it, are they going to then tattoo underneath your... For some people, when you say something on their post, they're going to lose it because that's yes. them. Mm. And, and An you've just... Of yes, themselves. and you've crossed yes. a line. And, and yes. it's interesting because earlier this year, I had seen my sister post something, kind of a cartoon joke, and um, within a couple of days, I saw something I thought was funny along the same lines. But when I commented it in her post, mm -hmm had a little conversation with her husband. So I was uh, alerted to the realization that um, your comments are on someone else's post are so different from your own post. It was like me tattooing on her arm. Oh, I, I thought, okay. okay, I thought this is funny. It's kind of like what she had, ha, ha, ha. She didn't think it was funny because not it was it. on her wall and not mine. Mm. Okay. So it is, it's interesting. So it's like navigating those little things that you, you kind of don't know until you get into yes. there, into it. I would, I say some of the stuff that I've noticed is the difference in how I may use Facebook as a, how old am I, 37-year-old woman versus how my mom and my mother-in-law mm -hmm. would use it. Mm -hmm. And basically how they're going to read something very differently from the way I may read mm -hmm. it or if I don't comment how that might be taken. It's, very, it's all navigating through that. Right. And again, it's being able to use social media graciousness in dealing with other people and being right. like, you know, they may not have commented on my stuff because maybe they don't have time. Or the fact that you might even be thinking all of that, right. you may be putting too much energy into right. it and not realizing it and taking it personal. And there's but so much content now that it's more likely they didn't even see it. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. For or sure. Just you know, sometimes our opinions are not needed, or or sometimes yeah, you just have the people point. that. You know, like you said, they're a connection, but maybe you're not really having a relationship with them. Okay. And so mm -hmm. you're on social media. And so if you comment on them, I mean, some of them, they see it. Of course they see it. They just choose not to whatever reason. Yeah. You know, so not everybody, like I tell my kids, are like, why do certain people do that? I mean, like, not everybody's had the same manners or the same training or the same, right. you know, some people just could care less. They don't feel yeah. that if you ask them a question that they have to respond, you know, that we think that that's just, you know, common courtesy 101. But some people just don't don't feel like that. Yeah. So it's just really looking at that, that mindset we were talking about, you know, looking at things from a heavenly perspective, you know, because I've had that instances where someone that I was in a relationship with rejected me unfairly when I came out about my testimony. Um, we did life together. We did certain things together. And then they became very much where they couldn't, even when we saw each other in, in person they couldn't engage with me they couldn't you know and I even asked them hey what's wrong what happened you know and yeah. they were just shocked that I would even ask you know what happened but don't but just knowing that if we look at those types of things as a heavenly perspective and not because our perceptions can be so full of deceptions like mm -hmm, you said absolutely. they may not have seen that they may yeah. not have been, but even if they're unfairly rejecting you or not doing that if we're looking at um, like Colossians says you know if, if we if we gauge everything through love we can't go wrong mm -hmm, but yeah. looking at it from a heavenly perspective but knowing not to take it personal mm -hmm, you know that those mm -hmm. people are either going through some stuff themselves um, and they may not know that, but like you said, again, disagreeing and disliking, it's not the same. Right. Accepting and approving is not the same thing. And we have to really look at that. And there was something, you know, like speaking of flesh book, you know, yesterday I had a friend share a news story and it was a very news story that had been very public and, um, it was shocking, and my first reaction because it was at the end of the day was to just go, "Wow, I just can't understand this." And it was about the the woman that that had been raped, um, and that the 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 perpetrator actually was seeking um, rights. custody yeah. rights to the child that was born from that rape, and um, that man was granted, you know, joint custody with the the person that he violated. And my first reaction was, "Wow, I can't understand this." And instantly when I put that before hitting send, the Holy Spirit said, you don't understand it, but I do. Mm, that is so so then it changed how I responded instead of an angry face or things. I just kind of put a sad face and I said, wow, although I don't understand this, I trust that God does. And as I trust mm -hmm. that God does, his promise is this, that he will work things out for good. So I'm trusting that somehow, some way, yeah. this tragedy, he can work out for good. But also, we were talking about if we look at that as a heavenly perspective, not mm -hmm. through our flesh, we'll respond differently. Yeah, think of what that does to your soul. The fact yes. that you decided to shift 
the way your perspective and how you responded to that. You right. may not think it's much to just respond a different way right. on Facebook, mm -hmm. but it actually is a lot. Yes. I mean, it that's sending a message you to don't your carry soul. that negativity. Yes, absolutely. You're just kind of, you know, really doing that. I mean, I've been very vocal where I usually, I mean, usually see the, the good side. I mean, I, I'm, I'm one, a big proponent, you know, a lot of us, you know, people will get on, especially on the bad parts of social media mm -hmm. and they'll reshare and reshare all of these yes. fake news stories. Yeah. And that's very disheartening to me because I'm like, I tell my kids, curiosity killed the cat for a reason. You know, there's <laughs> yeah. a reason curiosity learn from the cat, yes, learn from <laughs> the cat. do yeah. not, you know, if that thing says, look at the spider underneath this person's skin. I don't want to say that or, or <sighs> see the big pimple pop. I'm thinking, why do people you want to that. see that? But you know, those were, see the big pimple. <laughs> those were circulating, those were circulating, but they were hacker and phishing scams yeah. but can you imagine the millions of people that were clicking on those and then they yeah. were getting Click compromised yeah. they were clickbaiting but on a flip side of that i mean knowing knowing not to click on everything that you don't know right. don't take just because it looks like it came from a, a news site that's not real news but yeah. also another thing is people have enticed fear because mm -hmm. you know, social media has a whole list of agreements and, and clauses, but mm -hmm. your social media, you know, I guess what you allow and what you don't allow them are the same for all platforms. So a lot of people have been putting this fear like, <gasps> De delete messenger don't have messenger i've used messenger for years it's a great tool it has okay. no different uh privacy settings than what you said on your facebook if you want it to be mm -hmm. you know just i mean so all of them it's it's just kind of people will start resharing and resharing and then that entices fear yeah. and we've seen the media do that not only in election seasons but yeah. in different news stories they would just keep Mm -hmm. sharing these stories because they wanted people in fear or they wanted people in division and that's what the enemy wants us to Absolutely. he wants us yeah. in division he wants us in fear and because the chaos, then we can and it keeps chaos coming and back and keeps us knocked out but if we just have this over like think okay i'm going to look at this as a heavenly perspective mm -hmm. i'm going to look at this whatever's true whatever's noble whatever's mm -hmm. pure whatever's ex uh, that's how i'm going to choose to look at it mm -hmm. i'm going to sometimes have to put my love goggles on mm -hmm. because i can't really see the love in this but knowing our opinions sometimes are not needed, right? You know, and that we can. You know, and I found too in one article it was talking about, you know, social media can be addictive for people, and this isn't for everybody. This isn't going to happen for everybody right. where you feel addicted to it, where you're constantly needing to be on there or constantly posting, but that it can be that way for you. There's something now that they're they're thinking about um, putting this this. Um, name on a disorder, Facebook addiction disorder. The fact that I read that, and this was mm -hmm. a credible article, mm -hmm. I just kind of was like, wow, you know, mm -hmm. wow. But this is real stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just the effects, there are effects from withdrawing if you, you mm -hmm. aren't on social media, how that will affect you. But one of the, on the same study, it did say that it's a good idea to take a break. If you're noticing yes. you're having feelings that you're not comfortable with, take a break. Yeah. Do a fast, a social right. media fast. But really, we're just, it's a matter of us maybe getting you to ask yourself some questions on, do I have a problem with social media? Because we're asking ourselves these very same questions. Yeah. What am I putting out there? Is it being used for good? You know, yeah. um, are people getting sick of all my family photos? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. kidding. And if but it's just different you things. Bad, yeah. If, it's make, if you're scrolling through and it's making you angry and it's making you yeah. mad. I mean, I know like a lot, a lot during the um, election season and mm -hmm. all that. I just. I was so saddened by how many people were arguing and all these things and they were they were sharing these stories that were half truths, untruths, right. and they were just building on it. And I thought, oh my goodness, there's just such a spirit of heaviness. There's such a spirit of, of division here in things. And I had to a lot of times like I am Walk not away. going there. Yeah. yeah. Walk away, don't engage. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I recently watched um, a TED Talk with Monica Lewinsky from 2015. Um, and um, for all of you who, who maybe don't know who Monica Lewinsky is, um, she um, had the, I guess, misfortune of being a very public figure in a very um, shaming event. Yes. And um, yeah. some of the stuff that she, I want to read uh, word for word. She was saying, um, we're in this age of public shaming. The more mm -hmm. humiliating something, the more likely people are to click. Oh, we've mm. got to see that. This person's either going to trip or something horrible is going to happen. Or, mm. oh, God, that's ghastly. What is, you know, we have to see it. So um, she says, the more we click on this kind of gossip, the more numb we get to the human lives behind it. And the right. more numb we get, the more we click. Right. She's saying that we're in an empathy crisis. So mm. true. 
um, sharing someone else's tragedy um, or embarrassment so readily without just taking a pause to imagine walking a mile in their headline. Right. Wow, a so mile in their a mile headline. In How headline. appropriate is that? Yeah. That's, that's really, really good. good. That's yeah. really, really good because you know, that's the thing about it. if we're reading it and it's not compelling us to compassion for both sides, then we're looking at it with a judgment and a critical sure. eye. Yeah. yeah. You know? And if we're looking at it that way, we can ask ourselves why we can address that and not engage online. Right. Right. It, it's one thing to feel the way you're feeling and to address it, yeah. but to take the extra step and blast it on it social media. Mm -hmm. Let's rethink that, ladies. Let's be yeah. better about that. You know, that's one mm -hmm. thing we've we're been, we've been talking about with this with this show, all three of us. How much it's helping us grow, mm -hmm. and we want the same for our viewers. Mm -hmm. If you only watch one show out of all eight thousand, we end up doing. <laughs> you know, we hope that you right. finish that show and think, or while you're watching it, wow. Yeah, I can relate mm -hmm. to that. I need yeah. just, you know, what do I need to, God, what do you want me to see through this? You know, because we're with you. We're right. trying to figure this stuff out too. And they just take away a new view. Yes. Just a new view a new on view something, on you know, yes. that little nugget and things, just a new view to look at things differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not always going to be perfect. Like you said, I mean, we're human. We're not always going to get things right. But mm -hmm. if we strive to say, you know, how can I, you know, look be at better. this through, be better, <laughs> yeah. exactly. You know, the, the third show that we're going to be going into is, you know, how do we be better on that? But if we really look at those things out of concern and not condemnation, if we really know that, that, that our perception sometimes can be so full of, of deception that we really need to ask the great discerner, ask God, you know, Maybe I'm not seeing the whole picture, and that's how kind of yesterday God stopped me, and I was really going to just say, wow, I don't understand this. Mm -hmm. and God was saying, you don't, but I do. And I'm like, you know what? You're right, and I trust you that you do. Yeah. And I, you've, you're faithful in your promises that, that you will work out for good, and you will. Mm -hmm. So it's just really Amen looking that. at that in a, in a different way. Did Share you, the scripture, or did you have something? Just to, one more nugget from yeah, Michael Lewinsky. Yeah, um, she's got this drive um, to click with compassion. That's her hashtag, I think, oh, is click with yes. compassion. That's good. Yeah. No matter what it is, whether it's your own family, whether you're looking at some cringy stuff going on, you know, just click <laughs> yeah. it with compassion. Click it That's with compassion. Good. That's really good. We're going to have to add that to our hashtags. That's right. So we want you to join us on our Facebook page, Restored Ministries, and we want you to get involved. We want you to hashtag share your view of a new view and share good, bad, be better, share, speak life, and share, click with compassion. How can you tell us one thing you can do today to maybe change your view to a new view on how you do social media so that we can be better? Stay tuned right. for episode three coming up. We'll be able to share with you some, some little tidbits and some things that we've done with our own families and ourselves, how we can be better with social media.